Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. Now in this episode of the series, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the compilation process. So normally when we say compilation, we're referring to the process of taking some input file like our hello world.cpp that we looked at last time, so I'll go ahead and pull that up, and turning it into something that we can run. And we saw that using G++, giving our input file dash O, some output file name, right? We end up generating an executable that when we do dot slash hello world, you know, we go ahead and get um, our program runs, right? In this case, it prints hello world to the screen. But it turns out compilation isn't just one step. It turns out it's made of many steps, um, first of which generally being pre-processing. Then you have the compilation or turning things into assembly. Then you have the actual assembler, uh, which will translate it into something that the machine can read. And then you have uh, the linker, which we'll go ahead and link against any other libraries that we're using. So we talked about some of these things in brief detail last time, but we'll go over them in uh, a bit more full detail this time. So if we want to get all the intermediate steps inside of uh, compilation, we can go ahead and just add a flag to our compilation. And that's this dash save temps. And what this will do is save all the temporary files that the compiler generates. So here we see we've got this hello world.ii, hello world.s, and hello world.o. So the first thing uh, that we want to look at is inside of our original program, we talked a little bit about pre-processing, and we said that when we do this include right here, what the pre-processor will do is we'll paste the contents of the files associated with iStream where we've included them, right? And so the pre-processor actually does a number of things. We can go ahead and define uh, macros that can compute values. And instead of having to have you know, C++ code that does it, the compiler will actually calculate those values and just paste them into the program based upon some identifier. So in this case, I could do something like define x10. And now if I use x anywhere else in the program, right? say right there, um, I just need to use the identifier, in this case, just x. Now, inside of the, when the preprocessor gets a hold of this, it will just replace every instance of x with 10. All right, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that. And then we'll also take a look at how IO stream is included. All right, so let's go ahead and run uh, the save temps again. That way we get that, um, that definition of x in there. And we'll open up this intermediate file. So you see, you know, our files change quite a lot. So this doesn't look like our original you know, Hello World program. You see there's quite a few lines of things we really have no idea what they are and this is really the contents of the files associated with io stream right and if we go down to the very very bottom of our file right we see that we've got our main function so what happened was we had this you know include io stream up here and the contents of io stream were just pasted right there and likewise we define that variable x and it's just replaced that instance of x with the number 10 right so preprocessor handles lots of things like this. We can also include uh, files that we've written ourselves, and we talked about that last time using quotation marks, right, and giving the path to that file. And it will do the same thing. We'll just paste the contents of the file, you know, wherever we have that include statement. So that's the basics of preprocessing. So let's go ahead and open up hello world.cpp again, and we'll get rid of that uh, define. All right. So the next thing that we'll look at, uh, let's go ahead and regenerate those, is the compilation step, right? So your computer can't read, um, it can't read C++, so it has to be translated into the instructions that the computer can read. And this is compilation. So we need to turn our C++ program into a set of assembly level instructions. And we can see that with this, dat, uh, this dot s. Um, file, right? So this is the assembly that gets generated for a Hello World program. Now this also can't be run um, by our computer yet. So the computer, of course, can't read, you know, all these, you know, identifiers. It'll have to be translated into something to make it machine readable. But we've got a pretty faithful representation of our program, but using uh, a lot of the semantics and the instructions of our particular architecture, right? So you see, instead of having just, you know, C out, we now have, you know, calls to functions, say to, you know, O stream, we've got these move instructions, 
we've got these pop instructions, etc., and even a return right there. All right, so you see you have a move zero and then a return here. So this is probably going to be our return zero from our main function. And you can see we even have this label main right there. All right, so the next so the step after pre-processing is okay, let's make some assembly code. So after that, we have a, we have this gets passed to an assembler. Uh, and this will go ahead and translate our uh, assembly code into what's known as machine code or code that the uh, the computer can actually um, read, right? So actual binary. So we've got this hello world.o, so this is known as object code. So if we go ahead and try to open up hello world.o, we see that it's a bunch of gibberish, right? And that's because it's you know, machine readable format. So how do we read this? Well, we can use utility like obj dump or object dump dash d for disassemble hello world um, dot o and then we can say maybe i'll call this out.asm and i'll open up out.asm right so this this looks like much more in a machine readable format you even have the translation into hex the encoding in hexadecimal out to the side you see you see we still have this um uh this main label up here but it of course is going to look a whole lot different than our uh, our dot s file just our you know human readable assembly code so the next step we have is linking right so we said we were going to be using the standard library but when we compile something and generate this object code we still haven't linked against things yet like we haven't linked against the standard library so we know you know what a function looks like that we're going to call so that's that that will be inside of our headers you know what the interface looks like but we haven't actually linked up against the implementation yet so in order to do that, we finish out um, our compilation process with linking, where we link against all the libraries that we're going to need. And from the executable themselves, we can do LDD on hello world, and you can see all the libraries that it links against. So these are uh, dynamically linked libraries. You can also have statically linked. So this means at runtime, um, or these will things that will be dynamically linked. Uh, so here we've got you know Linux VDSO, lib standard C++, so this is our implementation of the standard library. If you're using something like Clang, this might be uh, lib C++ instead. Right? And we can even dump the assembly code from here as well. So we can do obj dump uh, dash d on our executable now. Right? And then we'll output this to out2.asm. And then we can do vim diff, which will compare these two files. And you can see that after linking, you know, these two files are going to look different, right? So you see that, you know, we've got significant differences between our object code right here, which is our hello world from our hello world.o, and with our uh, linked file, our executable, that's just hello world, right? So there's a lot of differences after linking actually goes on. So you see, you've got this, this libc in here and all these things because now we've linked against um, the actual libraries all right and then of course we've got our executable still so we can still run that but those are kind of the basic steps of compilation so let's do a brief recap so first uh, the preprocessor comes in and it will find the files that we've included it'll expand out macros and maybe replace some variables with whatever the define says then we go ahead and generate some assembly code right in this hello world.s file so it's human readable but it's the language of the computer, right? So it's instructions instead of C++. Then we take it through an assembler and we generate object code. So this is going to be more machine readable, but we still haven't linked against our libraries yet. Then we generate our executable and that's where we fill in um, a lot of the gaps left, left out before linking and we can run our executable. So that's going to do it for this episode. As always, feel free to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. So here we have C++ Crash Course, and we have links to all the original videos and all the files that are being continuously updated uh, for version 2 of this series, and we'll have links to the new videos as well. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.